All right, episode one. We are gonna kick this thing off with a rig tour. Behind me, you can see my setup that I've had for about two years. I've been spending the last few months getting this thing dialed in and ready for full-time life on the road. So what is it? This is a 2016 Toyota Tacoma with the SR trim, the 2.7 liter four banger access cab, six foot bed, <sighs> and it's two wheel drive. I know, I know, I know. But it's what I have for right now. And it's part of the reason that I went with the bed rail camper. So, you know, if I ever find 40K laying around, it should be a pretty easy upgrade. I'm gonna harp on this all the time. If you have the cash for a big, awesome rig, then go for it. Everyone loves them. They're super cool. I love them. But if you're redlining your bank account to live this lifestyle, then it's worth asking yourself if just maybe you've forgotten why you're doing it in the first place. If you're like me, you want to lower your overhead so that you can afford to live the way you want to live, to create the conditions to spend more time outside, hiking, camping, backpacking, fly fishing, and surfing, spending time with friends, and hopefully being a little more present. So yeah, get creative. I think it's part of the fun. Do I wish I had four-wheel drive? Hell yeah. But this truck does have one thing going for it. Because it has the basic trim and powertrain, it actually has the lowest curb weight and therefore the highest payload capacity of any of the Gen 3 Tacomas. If you're a nerd like me and you want to know more about GVWR gross weight, stick around to the end. I am going to be talking a little bit about that and sharing my truck's weight. But for now, let's get this show on the road. Nearly a stock truck, but I added BFG KO2 all-terrain tires Great for on and off the road. To improve weight management, ride quality, and stance, I went with some heavy duty leaf springs in the back. Under the rear bumper, I bolted on an aftermarket receiver. Not for towing, but it works fine for my water port shower. That's a 3.8 gallon freshwater tank that can be pressurized with a bike pump or an air compressor. These things have awful reviews online, but I've been really happy with it. Onto the coolest part of the rig, the Overland Camper. These are built out in Flagstaff, Arizona. The crew over there has been an awesome resource. I have nothing but good things to say about them. My camper has all the basics, six latches, milled aluminum siding, and it's featherweight coming in at 300 pounds. For options, extra cab over height was a no brainer. Allows my three inch mattress to live up on the bed platform full time. Got the barn doors for style points and functionality. It makes your tailgate more like a back porch. And speaking of, I found this affordable tailgate mod on Amazon and got rid of that corrugated plastic that's always spilling our beers and bumming us out. In the camper, I have a bed rug, keeping things cushy for the feet, and it seems to help with temperature regulation. Not a ton of windows on purpose, that keeps things low profile when the top's down, but I did go for the clear vinyl window pane in the canvas. That's nice if it's raining out or it's cold. I got the max air fan, intake and exhaust, keeping the air flowing on those hot days. Standard queen up top. I had some condensation issues under the mattress, but then found this product called Airflow by Turn Overland. Solved the problem and added a quarter inch of padding. On the walls, two saddlebags for keeping those day-to-day -day items. And downstairs, I have an 80-20 frame with a plywood bench. Truth be told, it's off-brand 80-20 from T-Nuts. They have better pricing, and you can order everything pre-cut. For power, keeping the modular theme, I went with the Dakota Lithium PowerBox 135. That's a 135 amp-hour battery that comes in a hard case and has a 300-watt inverter and some USB ports. I hook it up to a fuse panel and then run power wherever I need it. I keep it topped off with a 160 watt portable solar panel from EcoFlow. I like this setup because I can optimize the position of the panel in relation to the sun. And since my power needs are pretty minimal, one panel is plenty for now. Dun -da -da, the chuck box man a labor of love i built this thing last year it's a hyper organized camp kitchen i use it daily it's been great for cooking on the road the countertop was my most recent addition when attached to the wall it lands at the same height as my chuck box which creates more cooking area and it also doubles as my desk 
Super simple, nothing but half inch ply, paracord, and two carabiners. For heat, I went with a two kilowatt portable diesel heater from Planar and plumbed it into the camper through the bed. I love this thing so much for winter camping that it might have to be the topic of my next video. And last but not least, keeping things cold with the Yeti Tundra 65. Welcome to the cab. Seat delete in the back with a surface of three quarter inch plywood. On top of that, we have an eight gallon jug for drinking water and a rechargeable pump. If you're paying 75 bucks for this pump, you're getting got. Check the link, save your money. Next, a bag for dry food and a small toolkit. Got a gear bin on the other side. I keep my clothes in here too. Like any good gear closet, it gets a little crazy in there. Below the ply, mostly recovery gear and a few camp items. Toe strap, shackles, air compressor, saw, hatchet, and some go treads. They're not great compared to traction boards, but I use them for leveling too. Well, that pretty much wraps it up for the rig tour. Now I promised we would talk a little bit about gross weight, so let's get into it. Tacomas are mid-sized trucks through and through. Most Gen 3 Tacomas have a GVWR, that is gross vehicle weight rating of around 5,600 pounds. GVWR is defined as the maximum loaded weight of your vehicle set by the manufacturer at the time of the build. So what the heck does that mean? That means that your truck, your camper, all of your gear and you really shouldn't exceed that number. There are a lot of things you can do to improve ride performance and better distribute weight in your truck, but there's no official way to change that GVWR. Math time. Okay, so gross weight minus the curb weight of my particular truck tells us the payload. When I weighed my truck with a full load of gear, it came in at 5,040 pounds, which lands under my GVWR by 560 pounds. And that's awesome. This stuff is important. Take the time to consider it. It keeps you safe and it keeps your rig on the road longer. All right, if you want more information about anything we talked about today, let me know in the comments below. Check out one of my other videos. I'll do what I can to help you out. Um, otherwise, that is it. If you liked it, like it. And if you really liked it, come along for the ride. I'm gonna be making a lot more of these videos. Um, and thank you for being here. I really do appreciate your support. All right, see you next time.